So hello and welcome to Bandelier and Sales Intel's webinar today, an ultimate guide to remote sales training. My name is Ariana Shannon, and I'm the director of marketing here at Sales Intel, and I'm kind of an acting MC today. Uh, with us, we have our wonderful speakers. If you go ahead and pop to the next slide. Uh, Frank Frisbee, head of sales enablement here, and uh, Matt Scanlon, head of the office at Bandelier. So just take a moment, introduce yourselves uh, before we hop into the content. Hey, thank you very much, Ariana. Again, uh, my name is Frisbee here at Sales Intel. I head up sales enablement and uh, excited for you to join our session today. Yep, thanks everybody for joining. My name is Matt Scanlon. I'm the head of the office at Bandelaire. Um, so uh, helped start the company back in 2017 um, and I oversee our recruiting efforts, our training efforts um, and yeah, just excited to share some best practices with everybody. Well, great. Well, let's let's get started. Matt Matt has, Matt wears a lot of hats. Well, what we wanted to cover today, um, definitely some some challenges that I'm sure you're facing, that Matt and I are facing, and then we're just going to go through the do's and don'ts uh, as we see it for for remote training. We're going to leave some time at the end for Q and A, but please, uh, as you have questions, we have Ariana monitoring our our Q and A as well. Uh, we'll try to either answer them throughout or make sure we get we get to them at the end. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump into some of these challenges that uh, Matt and I know that we're facing, that we see that you are all facing. Um, it, it, it's definitely different than, than the way it used to be. Um, one of the challenges that I see is there's, there's no accidental learning. I can't, I can't tell you how much I learned around the water cooler or in the break room or or standing next to marketing or engineering when I was a, a sales leader in-house. Uh, and, that, and that just doesn't happen uh, as easily. The, the structure, the physical classroom is not there anymore um, you know, to be able to, to, to facilitate some of these things or, or quick jump into a quick room. Um, and then we're all struggling, not just in training, but you know, in business in general with the, the personal connection, connecting to your learners, getting to know them better. And that's a challenge as, as we have this, uh, this remote environment. And there's a, there's a couple more, right, Matt? Yeah, yeah. So when I think back on uh, Jeremy and I launching the, the company back in 2017, I think back on a conversation him and I had early on. And I remember telling Jeremy really early on, we were talking about training or we talking about building out this whole uh, you know, training platform where people can log in and they can monitor their own training. And I had to stop him at the time, it was 2017. I said, you gotta understand one thing about me. I said, one thing I'm really old school on is training. <laughs> and I said, I believe that in order to effectively train somebody, you gotta be there in person with them. You gotta look them in the eye. You gotta read the room and read people's you know, responses and their reactions. Uh, and it's been interesting you know, trying to, uh, in the last year, trying to adapt to that. And a couple of the, the things that we've found can be a struggle, but can also be used to our advantage is actual technology. So it can be a struggle because people get, we've all experienced it, Zoom fatigue, <laughs> they get com computer fatigue just in general. It's a struggle to train people on technology when you're not sitting there next to them, being able to show them things. Um, but actually using technology, we found, and we'll go through this in a bit, using those tools to your advantage can be, uh, can be really impactful as well. Um, and then just content hygiene. So keeping up to date with content. Um, the more you use technology and the more you're uploading these trainings into a certain platform, it can be challenging to keep this really refreshed and keep uh, all that content um, really relevant as new topics are popping up uh, every single day in the world of sales. So, yeah, when I was a when I was a trainer, we had a PowerPoint deck. We would, you know, this I'm dating myself a little bit, but we would print it out for every new hire class that was coming in, right? So we knew this is the accurate information that was going to get thrown out. We we're going to do it again. Now we have doc documents all over the place. Who knows what's right and, and, and uh, what's right and what's wrong as far as content goes. Well, let's jump into, into uh, some do's and don'ts. The way we broke up this session is uh, I'm going to go through uh, some things that I think you must do. And then Matt's going to go through the do's and then, uh, and then we're going to do the same on the, on the, what we think you shouldn't do with remote learning. Um, you know, my number one here is support. So it is harder to support learners when we are in a remote setting. And so the first thing is to make sure that they know it's okay to ask. Uh, 
I like to tell my learners, there are dumb questions, but I need you to ask them anyways, because someone else was probably still thinking the same dumb question. And just putting that baseline very, very low, ask anything, ask it, we'll figure it out. If they don't ask, to Matt's point earlier, we can't really read it on their faces at their loss, so they need to, to speak up and ask. Also trying to, uh, or making sure that you create those human connections. So because we don't have it in an office, what is the support personnel that you're giving them, right? So we make sure our salespeople have a manager from day one that they come in, that they know what the manager knows what they're going through. They have a mentor, they have an enablement team, and then they have access to a bunch of other people in the company uh, that they're introduced to, to make sure that they have those, those connections. And then also making sure they're supported in various formats. So adult learners come in a variety of, uh, of, of learning um, you know, methods and, and the way people think. And so giving them formats in both video, written word, live classes, and mixing that up is another way to make sure that, that your learners are supported. The other thing comes, comes to mind for me is, is you must provide channels. So as I came into uh, to sales Intel and I started looking at our Slack, I don't know uh, how many Slack users there are out there, but you know, we have dozens and dozens of Slack channels and you'll see something really good content wise going on in one Slack channel. And you'll think to yourself, at least as an enablement person, everyone should know that. Everyone should be talking about that. And so making sure that you provide and constantly break down um, you know, those, those silos and things like that. We also provide trainings that are open meetings. So even though I may be doing an onboarding for new hires, I make sure everybody in the company is aware of it and I get guests to come in. That's one benefit of, of remote learning is that you can have as many people in the room as you want. So come on in, let's talk about this, this topic. And then making sure that you have one-on-one -on -one interactions with your learners or that they have a one-on-one -on -one interaction at least so that they feel secure enough to ask, uh, ask those questions and let them know where they are. I really like to involve people in the process. And I would say I do this more so now uh, that we're remote than when we were in person. Um, I know uh, at my ripe old age that I don't know everything and that people are coming into our organization or people have past experiences that can really enliven a training or make it even better. And so making sure that they are free to give feedback and you take that feedback to constantly make the, the remote learning better. Um, and we do that through, uh, you know, through one-on-ones interactions too. I, I meet with people after trainings just to get their, their individual feedback as opposed to, to slacking the group. Well, Matt has some must do's with all of his experience too. And uh, he was smart enough to put a picture of himself on the slide. So Matt, why don't you, why don't you go through, why don't you go Perfect through screen chat? <laughs> yeah. And before I even get into this, Frank, one, uh, one point that you made that I want to just reinforce and echo is creating that environment, creating that environment where students feel comfortable asking questions. One of the things we do at Bandelier is we keep really structured data in our interview rubric on what questions people ask us. <laughs> we ask, we keep data on the questions we ask them too, and we score out every single question in a really structured way. Um, but we find that the most predictive, the most predictive piece of data in a sales rep's uh, performance, like in indicating they're, they're gonna be a high performer at the company, is not the questions we ask them in the interview process, but it's the questions they ask us. So I tell all the students that in day one of training, I say, I tell you that because we want you to feel comfortable asking questions. So that's a yeah. really important point. Um, yeah, my first must do is having a really structured uh, sales training curriculum. And when I say that, and when I'm training uh, people to uh, concepts within leadership, I tell people it really starts with learning outcomes. It starts with having a really clear and distinct understanding of what do you want the student to know and be able to do as a result of this training. And then having a really clear roadmap and blueprint of what those trainings look like in order to get them there. Um, so we take our students through uh, modules on, it starts with the psychology of sales. So everything is, is rooted in the psychology of sales. And then we go through the entire structure of the sales call. So how to first reach a decision maker, how to use different channels of outreach um, to, to get them interested, 
uh, how to introduce your, your call or how to introduce your email, how to grab their attention. How, you know, we go through training and active listening um, on questioning skills, on the pitch, on the close. We go through a whole module on what we call advanced sales conversations where we do things like objection handling. Uh, we do uh, things like social selling and messaging, email templates. Uh, but we wrap all of this up with an assessment process. It's really structured and uh, built out in a way that we get a really good understanding of what that student took away from the learning. So that's great. Yeah, structure is important, Matt. Yeah. So after telling you that everything needs to be really structured, <laughs> next I'm going to tell you <laughs> my next do is to mix it up. So it sounds a little bit like a um, a little bit like I'm giving conflicting feedback, but. Um, Really, I think what's really important in uh, engaging students and getting that deeper level of student retention is not just having videos or PowerPoints <laughs> and just speaking at them, uh, you know, for, for half an hour or an hour. Uh, it's the number, one of the number one mistakes that I see uh, within sales organizations and with training just in general is I, I tell new leaders, training is not a PowerPoint. <laughs> training is incorporating these things that get deeper levels of retention. So things like discussion, uh, having group discussions, having practice sessions, having really well thought out assessments so that that student is proving to you through whatever it might be, role plays, uh, through exercises that they have really understood the concepts that you've trained them on. Um, pulling them into things like call reviews, pulling them into virtual ride-alongs where they sit next to reps. Uh, we do tag teams where we'll have two reps, uh, you know, sit in a Zoom while they're doing outreach. Um, and actually, they can shadow each other and actually, like, listen in on people's uh, outreach calls live. Um, role plays, obviously, we, we start every single day off with a role play with their manager. And then round robin where we'll get three or four reps together, and they'll actually go around you know, the virtual room, the virtual environment. One of them will make a call, they'll discuss it and give feedback. The next one will make a call, discuss it and give feedback, just to mix up that training process um, so that it's not all just the audio visual, just of, you know, looking at a PowerPoint and hearing somebody lecture or somebody speak. Those are great. I think I think this might be the most uh, screen grabbed slide so far of uh, our listeners are like, these are all great. I'm gonna try to incorporate <laughs> all of these things. Good. Um, and then lastly, I referenced this up front, but giving your reps the necessary tools to succeed in the, the learning and training environment. So using Zoom, using Slack, uh, we, use, we actually have taken all of our training content, that screenshot you saw, that awkward screenshot of me standing in front of that wall. That was actually uh, our training program we call Bandelier University that's all uploaded in Thinkific. Um, we use Airtable for project management and for data and reporting. And then obviously we use sales intel, which has been incredibly valuable for, uh, for data and um, you know, getting things like direct lines and direct emails and those sorts of things. That's true. Maybe we both should have put this one first, right? Because without all the right tools, yes. for, it doesn't matter how much training you go if you don't have the, all the right tools in place. So that is, uh, that is great. Hopefully you, uh, you all got some good takeaways on, on what to do as you're refining or starting your, your remote training. So, uh, so let's go through some of the things maybe we, we shouldn't do. Um, uh, these kind of speak to my, you know, the opposite of my dues here, right? But um, creating silos and tribal knowledge. I'm sure you are all dealing with this as a leader or someone in learning where you'll be slacking with someone or you'll be talking to someone and they say, this is how we do this process. And you go, where did you get that from? Oh, well, Matt told me. All right, well, you go to Matt. Well, who told Matt? Ariana told. Him. All right. And it's just this tribal knowledge that's out there and people could be going down, down the wrong path. That's going to happen in any organization that happened when we were in the office. Um, but I would say do your best to uh, not create those silos uh, and do your best to have one consistent message out there from leadership, from sales enablement about the, the proper content and the proper way, proper way to do things. Um, the next is uh, I've found assuming a base knowledge. I had someone come into my training um, recently in the last few months that had never used Google Calendar, right? I, I just I just couldn't believe that might be something that I had to baseline and say, is everybody comfortable here? 
because I'm running all my trainings through Google Calendar right now. And they hadn't accepted anything. I thought, oh my gosh, are they okay? They just didn't even know how to do it. And that taught me a lesson is to consistently check what the base knowledge is of your learners so that you know how to either further support them to bring them up to speed um, or to, to bring the class down a level so that everybody is there. Um, you know, I ask a show of hands, who's used Salesforce before? I may have 10 students and two of them have never used it. We're still going to go through how Sales Intel uses Salesforce, but I'm going to pull those two aside and say, here's what accounts means. Here's what leads mean. Are you familiar with this, et cetera? And then the other thing is I would say, please don't ever, uh, and as you're in sales leadership, sales training, sales enablement, you'll have a tendency uh, to pretend you have it all figured out. Please don't pretend you do. The more you can be human and say, hey, this is progress over perfection. We constantly need your feedback. Um, this is a team sport. You're going to bring your own things to this as well. Um, and also the ability to say, I don't know, as opposed to making something up or skirting a question. Say, I don't know. I'll find out the answer for you. Or I don't know. Can you ask this resource and get back to us, the subject matter expert? Three important don'ts as you go through and, and build and refine your your uh, your remote learning here. And then Matt has some as well. Matt has some good ones. Yeah, so and there's some there's a little bit of overlap between some of these concepts and some of these themes. But the number one thing I had as a don't is don't leave students on their own. You know that um, you know sales 101 is rapport building <laughs> with prospects and that's that's important uh, it's an important concept in leadership and in training just in general is making sure that there is that human connection. So when you hire new team members, uh, make sure that it's not, oh, here's a bunch of video recordings, go watch this for the first day or the first week. Uh, then you know, we'll slowly introduce you to the team and, and you'll get to know people. Um, it's a good way for, that's a good way for uh, the new hires to feel disengaged and like kind of detached from the company. So things like having new hire mentors is, it's a little thing, but just you've got a senior rep on your team, somebody who's been doing a really good job, you know, has been there a couple months or been there a year. Um, maybe they're aligned with one of the new hires just to bounce ideas off of simple questions that they might have. You know, they might not feel totally comfortable asking their trainer or asking their manager, you know, especially if it's like, oh, they kind of showed me how to do this, but I kind of don't yeah. remember. Right. <laughs> you know, they might feel more comfortable going to that new hire mentor. Um, we break everything into pods. So even across clients, we have, um, we have pods that are small groups, usually between four and six reps, along with like a team lead um, that uh, work together and they do call reviews together. And those are generally the, uh, they operate as, as their own little independent team. Uh, training partners. So if you're hiring a, a large class, you know, we've you know, in the last several months, we've uh, we've had classes that were up to 20 people we were hiring at a time. So pairing them off into to training partners or they can bounce ideas off each other and they can, um, you know, have uh, have some of those discussions and, and, uh, and things like that. Um, and then review sessions, making sure that all the content, you know, back to my early point, <laughs> back in the 2017 version of myself would say, well, I need to look people in the eye and then I can tell if they understand the content or not. Um, there is some truth in that. So actually, you know, having the structured sales training process, having the videos and having the assessments, but also you know, combining that with here's a Zoom video and I'm going to ask you some of these questions and I'm going to kind of read your responses and I can kind of tell if there's stuff that isn't quite isn't quite there yet and I need to review some of those uh, those concepts. Um, and then virtual meet and greets where they're meeting, you know, their their team lead, they're meeting their their managers, but also, um, you know, our CEO Jeremy jumps on um, on a meeting with every one of our new hires within their first couple of days. I do the same thing. Um, so just making sure that they've met the organization, they feel part of the team. One of the things I've implemented, and, and I don't know if everybody should do this, but I do have a new hire happy hour on the Friday afternoon of their first week. And I invite some different people from different departments. So it's the first time they're seeing them. Uh, but if people choose, they have an adult beverage at five o'clock and, you know, it's just, there's no, it's just like we used to do, except of course it's over Zoom. So it's not as, not as fun. <laughs> yeah. 
We've done um, we've done team builders and things where we do like get to know your team like trivia. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll show like a picture of somebody's pet and say whose pet is this? And, like a fun <laughs> fun fact about them. Uh, so yeah, those those kind of things are always fun. Uh, good way to to get to know some of the new team members. And it's almost you're creating some of that office experience or some of that uh, that camaraderie that sometimes can be missed uh, yep. in the office. So yeah, for sure. Um, my second don't, this sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but it's don't give your students all the answers. <laughs> so I always tell people who are going through my leadership uh, trainings this, I say, you know, learning should be difficult. Training should be difficult. It shouldn't be easy because it actually enhances the student's uh, retention of the information. The more they have to recall the information and the harder, the harder it is. You don't want it to be too difficult. You don't want it to be impossible for them, but it should be that balance between it can't be too easy and it can't be too difficult. Uh, and part of what I like to do is like this 80-20 rule, which is I give the students a lot of time for things like self-study. So, you know, maybe tell them up front, hey, I'm going to give you 80% of the training and the knowledge, but I actually want you 20% of the time to go out there, study sales concepts you know, find out what call openings were missing, you know, what are some uh, that are working in the industry, if you're on, you know, sales blogs or following some sales leadership, uh, what are some things that are missing from our training, um, and it gives them a good, um, a good sense of empowerment and accountability to, to take, take some control over their own learning. And then this actually should have been my number one, <laughs> but number one is don't ever stop training. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest mistakes I see is that people view training as something we do in the first week or the first two weeks of a new hire or when they switch positions and they switch roles. It's like, ah, they, they already went through training, now they're switching roles um, and we've got to train them again. Um, the reality is, and hopefully everybody knows this, but um, there, there is a process of ongoing training that's really required in employee development. And there's really kind of like, a, I think of it as a three prong approach, which is the first prong is uh, reinforcing those concepts that they went through in upfront training. So I, I tell new leaders, I'm like, expect them to forget the content. People right. forget, <laughs> they forget training. That's what, right. you know, everyone does it. It's, it's human nature. So we have to go back and review those concepts from the 101 training. We also need to give them like a 201 level understanding of their current roles. So you've gone through the 101 stuff and the upfront training in the first two weeks. You're certified to do outreach or to perform this role. Now let's give them a more in-depth understanding of this role and how to be really effective at it. And, and, some, the, and some questions and some learnings don't happen until you're actually doing the work anyways, right? And so right. you, you yep. can read from a textbook for a week, but when you start doing it, that's when the real questions and concerns and thought comes in. Yep. And we do things like we, we call them workshop Wednesdays, uh, where we do, uh, we bring the whole company together, we do a couple different time slots during the day, and we just do a workshop where we do a deep dive into one concept from training. So one call introduction, one objection handling technique, one email template, whatever it might be, it's just a deep dive into that one specific concept that that rep went through in training. Um, my rule of these for the managers who are running them is no more than one PowerPoint slide. <laughs> so you can That's do good. one PowerPoint slide to remind them of it. And then it's gotta be breakout groups. It's gotta be discussions. It's gotta be, hey, let's you know take 20 minutes actually implementing this call opening or whatever it might be. Um, but it can't be another like, you know, 10 slide PowerPoint where people are staring at Zoom. And then the third piece that I think is also really important but it's off, often ignored is training people for the next role <laughs> while they're in the current role. What I mean by that is we actually reserve for every one of our SDRs, every one of our inside reps, actually every single person in our company, we reserve 10% of their time for continuous education development. And that's where we're running things like leadership training um, so they can learn leadership concepts and they can learn how to, how to train, how to coach, how to motivate, all those kind of things while they're in their current role. Um, so as you grow and as you scale as a company, you have new leaderships, new leadership teams uh, that are waiting on the bench, uh, ready to step into the next role. That's phenomenal, 10%. Uh, it's, it's great to draw a line there as a, as a company. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right, well, we've talked enough, I think, um, thrown a lot at you. 
Um, Ariana took back control. Thank you, Ariana. And um, we're here for the next, uh, you know, six, seven minutes to, uh, to answer any questions that, that you all may have. Feel free to throw it in the chat or the Q&A. Oh my gosh, Matt, I think we did a perfect webinar. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, here we go. All right. Awesome, we have a question. Sorry, I'm trying to turn my video back on, but it's just not letting me. So you'll just get to hear the mellow sounds of my voice. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Whenever you're ready, please type in that question. Talk about Zoom fatigue. I can't even figure out how to get the video back on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here is our first question. Any thoughts on how to approach training for more experienced enterprise folks versus earlier in the career or junior folks? I, I got one for this. I'm interested to hear Matt's, uh, Matt's opinion too, but with my most experienced folks, um, I would always sit down and ask them, if you could get better at one thing, that would make you more money, let's say if it's an enterprise salesperson, what would it be? And once they identify that, right, then it's now, now you've got them. That's the topic. What are some, and ask them, be consultative about it. What are some things we could do to help you get better at that? Well, I could read this or I could shadow Johnny who's good at it, or I could talk to Mary and this other company that I know, right? All right, great. Why don't you go do that and bring that back to me? So I think it's really, uh, it's really catered uh, and it can't be force fed for someone that has years and years and years of experience, um, you know, in that, in that role. Matt, do you have any other thoughts on that one? Yeah. So this is actually something we've been talking a lot about over the last uh, six months or so is developing not just additional trainings, but also additional, tr like an actual track, a career path for people who are more experienced in sales and really who want to just learn more about sales and pursue sales versus management or versus leadership. And what we actually are in the process of working on right now is a, a full 201 uh, sales training curriculum, similar to the 101, except we get deeper in the funnel. We you know review techniques on how to conduct product demonstrations, how to follow up with people down funnel, uh, how to conduct discovery calls, how to close sales, all those types of things. And then the last thing I'd add in for some of those more experienced reps is also tap on the experienced reps to help out with the training. <laughs> That's one thing that I love to do is if they, um, if they have a concept that you don't necessarily have the training built out on is tell them to do some research <laughs> and, you know, uh, do some research on this topic, collaborate with them and have them develop a training uh, that they can, you know, potentially even deliver to the company. Yes, it takes a village. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. All right, we've got a few more questions in here. Where do you start when creating a training curriculum? What areas do you start on and build out from there? Matt, I'll let you take that one. <laughs> yes, yeah. So to me, it always starts with, um, it starts with the learning outcomes and it starts with what do I want, what do I need this student to know and be able to do as a result of this training? And this is gonna sound a little bit counterintuitive, but it, you wanna start with what are the bare minimum? <laughs> What's the bare minimum knowledge base that this person needs to, in our case, execute a cold call, execute a cold email, and like, you know, prospect through, through outreach. So we start there with like, what is the bare minimum? And then what I usually do, believe it or not, is I actually use that learning outcome to then think about the assessments. How am I gonna assess the students? You know, how am I gonna build out really structured assessments, structured role plays, where they're gonna prove to me at the end of the, this training that they've understood these concepts. And then I build out the content around those two things, around how do I get them from point A to point B. Awesome. Perfect. Well, we've got one more question. And then we'll be at our time for the day. Uh, question is, uh, what are the best ways to coach new hires that are just getting started in a sales or cold calling role? Oh, awesome. I've, I've done this hundreds of times. Um, you know, the, the first thing is to give them a framework of a, of a talk track. Uh, the second thing is to let them know that 
uh, rejection is inevitable and it's not personal. So I've seen a lot of people fail in sales when they took, uh, they didn't understand it was a numbers game. They took rejection personally and they weren't able to push past that. Um, and so uh, giving them that, hopefully you don't have call avoidance, um, but as salespeople, outbound salespeople, we're professional interrupters uh, in people's lives. And, uh, and you have to understand that people are gonna tell you no more often than yes. And once you get through that and you understand it's a numbers game, things get a lot easier. If you're talking about coaching, um, any sort of call recording is helpful, shadowing, feedback, and thinking about the individual words people use and how the prospect may be feeling when they're saying that and then active listening and things like that. So listening to a bunch of calls, giving that coaching, spot checking, that sort of thing. Yeah. The only thing I'd add to that, I think that's that's all exactly correct. I'd, I also like, with especially with new reps, to have them recall the information from training. So a lot of times I like to play a call, listen to a call. First thing I'll do is get their thoughts on it. Hey, bring this back to training. What were your thoughts on it at, in relation to what you were trained on? And a lot of times I think if you can get that new hire, that new rep thinking back and like coming up with, it again, goes back to come up with some of those answers themselves. <laughs> like yep. Force them to think about you. If you give them all the answers, they're actually less likely in my experience to implement all that feedback than if they have to recall the information themselves and bring it to the forefront of their memory. That's when you really find that that, uh, that information is really sticky and really retained well. All good awesome. points. Go ahead, Ariana. So no, that's fantastic. Uh, we had a couple of more elements in the chat, but we are at time for the day. Uh, if you'd like, uh, here are Matt and Frank's email addresses. Of course, you can always hit them up on LinkedIn with any additional questions and follow up. Uh, but thank you, Frank. Thank you, Matt. Definitely learned a lot from sitting in this session. I hope all of our attendees did as well. Uh, and, and hey, if you feel like you didn't take enough notes, don't worry. You'll get a copy of this in your inbox tomorrow. So with that, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful afternoon.